Hello and welcome back to the Geek on My Sleeve channel. This is Geek Out 101. Uh, it is Valley of Death, which is book two in the Apocalypse Gate series by Daniel Schahoffen. Sorry for butchering the name. Uh, yeah, quick, uh, quick, quick little disclaimer in regards to if you haven't read this book yet. It is what I would consider for a mature audience, but we will be keeping it PG here. Um, if you haven't picked up the least. book, link in the description, affiliate. Thank you ahead of time. Um, I, yeah, as well as I ran into a couple awkward moments with it due to the nature of the book. Um, I got a chuckle out of it, so I'll share. I always have my audiobooks going no matter what. In doing so, I have a shower speaker. Well, <laughs> I normally put on my headset, and so that's connected so it won't connect to the shower speaker. Well, it turns out that uh, I didn't have my headset on, and the lady gets up before me, turns on the shower speaker. And of course, we're right at the beginning of a, uh, a sex scene, so that was a interesting, questionable conversation that we had, and uh, thus is life. Yeah, so. she's like, what are you listening to, Pete? Uh, Not uh, something definitely recommended for headphones or to be listening to with your significant other of choice. Eh, you just got to listen to it at 3x and most people won't understand it anyway. They'll just be like, what is that? What is that? Are you listening to a foreign language? It's like, no, I'm just frame jacking. Like, Guppy's got my back. So, Yeah. Um, some quick uh, housekeeping, bookkeeping items. First and foremost, really appreciate all you guys hopping on with us live and uh, appreciate those of you catching it on the recap. Uh, as Pete said, 101, geek out, having fun, spoilers ahead. Um, just got done doing a live book discussion for a leader on read along of the lost fleet series just finished the second one um with a couple buddies uh rajathon unity 151 spiral metro books um if you're into sci-fi and want to hop in on that we're going to be starting the next series next month the lost stars you don't have to read the previous series but if you want to go for it if you don't you can jump right in at book one of the third series um, by jack campbell and probably going to be doing that live book discussion either late november early december uh in addition to that pete has been on it has our next couple streams up so you can check those guys out trying to stick with our monster mash for October and then um, get into a number of other books that we're really interested in. Like I said, check out our social um, or look at the top of our homepage on YouTube to see what we have coming up. And um, yeah, thanks for all the support. Looking forward to talking more about Apocalypse Gates, book two. Um, I'm trying to think at this point, we're maybe not even a couple months into the quote unquote rapture where the premise is um, we're in a simulation video game, kind of have some Bobberverse type things going on where the main character died. He's now uploaded as a replicant slash AI playing in this video game we don't know a whole lot besides he has a handler 
which is now named Jeeves. I think he was Steven in the first book. Yeah. Until he won the bet. Um, yeah, our, our main character um, is kind of further along. They, they do a good job easing us into the first book, letting us learn about the game mechanics. And then I felt like as far as scaling and progression goes, book two kind of cranks it up a notch, right? I I felt similarly opposite. Um, okay. Book one, there was a lot of town development and mm-hmm. I guess kind of world understanding. Mm-hmm. Book two was kind of like on the road again. Uh, it was a lot of traveling. It's true. I guess there was more creature developments. And then the very end there was probably the most exciting. Um, he does a good job not diving too deep into details so mm-hmm. that, as we know, by the end of this book, you've been warned. Um he pretty much says everything is going to change and yeah it's uh so this this is a weird book in the genre for me because normally i like heavily stats and heavy combat as well as this is like apocalyptic but not really because it's just a simulation what? or is apocalypse it apocalypse escape is I, apocalyptic I was going to say it's finally staying true or getting closer to the title of the series. Yeah, um, yeah there, there's a lot of cool developments that happen, but it hints at everything changing. Well, we, we pretty much establish um, three additional settlements in this book, right? Like one of them um, goes or, down to I a wyvern. I think we did four, but yeah, four, well, one of them died. Okay. Okay, yeah. And like you said, back on the road again. Um, we we get our song and dance down about how the rules of the world have changed. I am the hero. You, the rest of you guys are peons. Um, you know, I have the power to set up settlements. Uh, but yeah, the zombies are progressing. They're getting smarter. We're, we're getting to the point where they start planning ambushes, laying traps, using firearms. Uh, at the very end of the first book, we see like a dragon or a wyvern or something flying through the sky. So we get to see some of how the animals have changed. We have like giant ravens Arr. and, um, you know, all these other creatures kind of like getting magic powers i guess not quite i or so a couple separate lines of thought the dragons at the end of book one we have to see it again at the beginning of book two and Mm -hmm. they kind of guesstimate because they have the dragon and then wyverns and then drakes and the the variances between them and then jeeves says that the draconic gate has opened um and then throughout Lake our journey monsters um we end up finding the salamanders or fire lizards those who don't regularly read a bunch of manga or watch anime because they they end up mm-hmm. having a lot of fire lizards anyway we run into salamanders um i really enjoyed the way that he explains the way that these zombies are growing and developing um Mm -hmm. we get to see it's towards the end it's uh when we're interacting with the ghost at this point the zombies are actively using firearms which is pretty scary and ever but the ghosts are pure essence so to speak and they can you know essentially it's a resource that the zombies can take in and they will um absorb it and you Mm -hmm. know advance in intelligence Mm -hmm. uh which we haven't ran into like any major cities yet and oh man i just uh, it's gonna be pretty bad when that happens um 
and then yeah like you're saying for all the monsters i so we do have the wise old man as bill and we did finally run into giant spiders so hey we got our, our lit our... rpg trope giant spiders check check um yeah good to see white thatch um another huge lit rpg fan always enjoy your commentary and dialogue and contribution um if i remember right white that did warn us a bit about um the the graphic scenes kind of ratcheting it up a notch um and part of that was interesting because all the other quote unquote humans are ais supposedly there are other players go ahead or so that's something that i would like to know more about the outside world um essentially Jeeves says that every person who's in here such as like bill or any of the npcs or normies are failed experiments of previous iterations of essentially what our main guy Alvin is going through. So it could be a lot of people. So that kind of makes is you wonder. Enough that they can theoretically populate the world. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which, yeah. Anyway, so thing things are getting weird. Um, we still haven't ran into any other, I guess, actual survivors or the people who are going through the simulation for the first time yet. Yeah. Um. Yeah, oh, I, that's, or, yeah, White Thatch says, I imagine the outside world like in Wally. e so, I, I figured it wasn't good. There's a Which reason why I we're haven't seen living Wally, in the simulation. But... Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much um, like it's, uh, I think in Wally, e they all like live on a space station more or less. And the actual planet is just a mess, like over polluted, trashed. Um, kind of an apocalypse of its own, just no zombies in Wally. -E. Um, so, yeah, it it's interesting. And you talked a bit about it, where like a lot of times in the series, it's like very important for the books to have established rules that we follow. Um, and in this one the established rules change periodically and i'd be curious to get your take on it but for me it, it wasn't really a major violation for me like it was believable or because it, it wasn't just because of the way he went about it like for example oh gothy's the one who read all of the items and was marking items for junk and knew of all of them and i think jeeves hints at a couple of abilities and they they the verbiage is probably the line where it's like it was a little bit one it was a little bit the other mm -hmm. um for example uh i think it was book one they talk about an earbud that you can put in for a translation power so mm -hmm. it's a physical object but then it's a power and then later they talk about spells which is it a power is it a physical thing you know whatnot but then at the very end of this book we get to oh it's not millhouse it's the other guy when we're going and uh he uses his tracking power which mm -hmm. is labeled a power not a spell but we don't know if it is an object but it relies on object anyway uh i enjoy magic system so it Same. does it well Same. in the fact that it, it didn't really express or explain it and then it also kind of gives you the vibe of hunger games per se where you're a fish in the pond and they can do whatever they want and then it makes sense for one of the reasons I enjoy Sword Art Online, for example, is it gets to a point to where they're going to need funding and they branch out into medical endeavors, which is a great way to get funding. Mm -hmm. um, so 
them doing something similar yet different and taking more of the stream ask you know watch us entertain people is you know just a separate approach for it all so to change things yeah and he he starts to get a bit of a following um as well um i would say he's probably i don't know how they can justify it outside the game but he's definitely one of the front runners in many regards for the first to establish the second settlement first yeah, to do the third settlement first, first to go through the gate like mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he's got to be one of the top front runners for however many they actually have i think the gate concept is pretty cool um the fact that like they open it up and I'm, I'm really curious if like other players are different races or if they're all quote unquote human and how that works. Um, but it's pretty much like a war against like these other worlds, right? In addition to the uh, zombies coming well, about. And that's like, we where get to see the Fae a little bit. Things get weird because it's good that it's different but in typical lit rpg fashion it's pretty mm -hmm. common for people to get a township or something they're beholden to or and try to build up and you right. know yada dada Faction well or whatever. we did that book one and then we peace out granted it's to assist one of our npcs and it's to figure out more about the world which we need to mm -hmm. do um mm -hmm. but he just kind of runs off yeah we get a little, little bit of jeeves um relaying back and other things and it definitely helps us out with the way everything progresses but mm -hmm. it, kind of like towards the end after a lot of it changes and they're having the conversation where what's the point you know what's the end game you know our main guy is just trying to survive the people are just trying to have him live longer that way they can keep um getting revenue off of him right. doing what he's doing right. and then it, it pretty much comes down to adventure time at the end where gothy's like oh we can be adventurers and this way we can you know tag all the places and transport people and do other things and Come on, grab your friends. Yeah. Yeah. So um, White Thatch has finished the series. I asked him, uh, do we get to see more of the world outside of the game later in the series? White Thatch responded, not really. We do get an admin later on that shows up. And then commented, can't even give a hint why the world's why the world works that way because it's kind of forehead slap so we we do try to keep spoilers moving forward to a minimum but um also appreciate when you guys go a little bit further than us kind of help us uh figure some of those things out maybe a little bit of foreshadowing not quite spoilers and i guess like all in all that's fine because typical lit RPG fashion is you're trapped in the game mm -hmm. and there's no hope of escape and you're just trying to make the best of living in the environment you're in. A couple mm -hmm. do it differently where like Ascend Online, you're not trapped or like the land where there are opportunities that they, they hint that there's still connections between them or mm -hmm. he who fights with monsters it's a underlying thing that they keep toying with where it's like oh yeah you've had the power all along and you just gotta think to yourself like magic go back magic and you know other factors so uh, yeah 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 um white thatch commented good books and good narration just very adult relationships and yeah well well said um though i don't think and it's just again personal opinion the adult relationships are too over the top like it's a part of it because this this is it's an adult it's a mature book and 
it's this guy pretty much at the end of the world. So he gets his companion. What do you expect is going to happen? Adrenaline rush, um, you know, out on their own. Um, they're, they're going to have a bit of fun. So for as explicit as things get, there's a lot of, I guess, just great real world applications. For example... that cut off my audio oh lessons learned or was mine still coming through nope or do you hear this nope hmm okay i lied anyway so essentially says hey we'll both have moments that one of us needs to be strong for the other one And the three pillars to any good relationship, trust, honesty, and... Communication? And communication. Anyway, I thought I had it set up to loop through, but apparently every time I open a new file, it gets reset in that application. So mm. life gets weird. Gotta fix uh, the layers of inception. Yeah. And then uh, there's another one where well, she talks well about said, White Thatch. There is a dungeon in his player house and not the adventure kind. Yeah. Yep. The, White Thatch uh, hinted at it in the first book. We do get a little uh, BDSM in this. Um, but yeah. Sorry. Continue, Pete. Yeah. There, there's a lot of good that comes from all of the extra Mm -hmm. yeah um before i forget uh always an important thing for you pete how was the combat uh there wasn't really i mean there was but there wasn't we we had quite a bit but they and again, we're using guns. They they tend to be shorter scenes, right? As it goes down the combat. So I took some semblance of notes. Um, but yeah, I mean, they were all pretty quick. Like we get the ambush with the zombies towards the beginning with the crowbars where it's like literally they just hit the car with the crowbars. Mm -hmm. And it's good to tell us that they're advancing and to give us more with it. And then we had the spider, which was like, okay, we can't continue. Let's draw it out. And then it was dead. But that was pretty much it. Um, we had the two toads that came up and were playing tug of war uh, with the car, which was, you know, just a nod to the mutations for other stuff coming forward. And right. then we had the seven foot cows and the giant hawks, which uh, that, it, that was pretty intense. Like as they're racing against uh, the the hurdle of cows or whatever, about to um, ram the road and everything. Yeah, yeah, and it was interesting because the uh, cows were still grazing, so they were mutated, but not far or not completely changed from their beginning so to speak mm -hmm. um oh and then we had the spirits and the zombies with the guns which was a pretty drawn out scene and was thoroughly enjoyable mm -hmm. um and then we had oh i guess before that we had the dragon who exploded himself with the fire or the gasoline or whatnot which right. was a hint to you know they can bleed so they can die um and then 
we had the salamanders for you know we got to see a, a bit of the gate which uh, was relevant but irrelevant because we know that armor values changed by the end of it uh we get the drake battle which was also very exciting and to see kind of the uh companionship or the way that the brothers interacted where he's you know gonna say just like in high school and hey we don't have time for this one-on-one -on -one macho bs but he was doing it for them to draw the uh drake out Mm -hmm. And, you know, they already knew what was going to happen, even though they're saying one thing and doing something else for the subterfuge. Uh, mm -hmm. And then the phase were kind of lackluster, but it makes sense if you know their tricks going into it. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was interesting for the gates and the time dilation, but they just kind of rolled over them which made a lot of sense for why they were like, hey, we're going to change everything. You guys are being a little too successful, which... And, and quote-unquote breaking it, right? Like, I felt um, the author did a good job kind of explaining it away. It's not just like, oh, hey, we're going to upend the rules. Um, he, they're, they're pretty much further along in the game than anyone else has been, and they actually are bringing in, quote-unquote, game developers right is the way they explained it um, yeah so yeah which is pretty typical where they were dealing with frozen people's minds and have stuff they need to do but they need funding so you know why reinvent the wheel when you can just find a specialist who has mm -hmm. some expertise in the field Mm -hmm. which is where I'm excited because I really want to see more of the powers. Like they kind of hinted at the melee skill trees were weird and we know they probably changed. Um, but she talks about if you're holding a hammer, you get a different path versus holding like a sword or a knife. And yeah. Yeah. And then I'm curious in regards to the, uh, race change as well if it's something I'm, similar I'm to about that too the uh the way the translation earbud was described at the beginning where it could activate twice and would translate for so long so kind of like harry potter invisibility cloak where you can do it but it's not really you where it's a illusion of sorts or a duration of sorts and then as we all know through lit rpgs games fantasy realms each race has different uh primary specs mm -hmm. so if they will adapt um as well as humans are locked to only having a max of 10 in every stat we're not close to capping out and go on max character but so they did change some of those mechanics didn't they they're now like whole points instead of the partial points or whatever or they did change it because you used to be able to get a tenth of a point but it's still humans are capped at 10 points right. so that's where right. race change opportunities could be beneficial yeah. if they have different limits or qualifications or Yada dada. So I'm, I'm excited for the development going forward. Uh, I had a yeah. good laugh out loud moment when um, him and Gothy were speculating about what all um, she could change into and, and talking about it. Yeah. So it was, it was pretty funny there. Um, of course, I only grabbed the end of that one if this works. Fair enough. Seriously, though, you wouldn't mind me being non-human? As long as you're still you emotionally and mentally, probably not. Though a troll would be pushing it. So, yeah, did that come through? It did. Okay. So it I just did. got the end of it for the uh, the wholesome value, the wholesome points. And for me, it's more like we objectify and set parameters that are society, but at the same time 
were more than just flesh sacks. I know that was said horribly, but I, yeah. Of course, we're uh, digital constructs. Or no, 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 I was saying it's, you oh. know, mentally, emotionally, mm. situationally. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, White Thatch commented, I love that he acts in a way that most nerds would in the in a zombie apocalypse and cheeses his way through. Um, he certainly does use humor to cope. And um, yeah, I, I know I appreciate that. And Peter can hardly get through a book if we don't have some snarky sidekick or uh, sarcasm uh, in the dialogue. You've driven it a few times so. now. When we hit the road that we haven't traveled yet, things will probably get interesting. Define interesting, Becky asked. Oh God, oh God, we're all going to die? Alvin quipped. There we go. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Um, yeah. Yeah. They're fun. I, I definitely enjoyed the book. I'm glad we picked it up. Um, where where does it rank for you in like lit RPG? It, I, it, it's kind of got its own. A, as far as like straight lit RPG. It, it lacks a lot of the straight development and abilities and magic system, mm -hmm. but it's not based in the fantasy esque realm, or mm. it's not a urban fantasy esque one. So it's kind of hard to compare them apples to apples because the difference between you know going from killing that fox to killing giant spiders to, you know, facing off against undead lich lords. It's kind of like, hey, it's zombies. And uh, nature got a little weird, but it's, its progression is different, and it said everything's going to change. Um, yeah. I, it's got so... potential for going forward... It's not a lit RPG. What? Yeah, that's uh, that's what White Thatch says. It's not a lit RPG. So I was curious, and I pulled it up on Amazon. I I would consider it a soft... fiction, post-apocalyptic science fiction. I I would kind of consider it a soft, just in the regards of the stats mechanic, um, mm -hmm. and you know the fact that we're living in a simulation but yeah quote unquote trapped in a game it has lit rpg themes or tropes um yeah but yeah, but yeah I, it, I it doesn't it. really there there's too many variables and differences to like i enjoy it and there's definitely a lot of potential for continuation and i'm going to continue mm -hmm. the series but i guess i don't really have a a number for the feels. It, if you are okay with adult themes and you like zombie apocalypse books, it's fun. It's definitely fun. Um, is it like one of my top books? Not quite, but um, you know, when you collect seven, 800 different audiobooks, uh, it's good to branch out, try new ones. And, uh, yeah, really, really had a lot of fun. And I believe there's seven in the series. So it'll be interesting to see how it continues to progress. I really hope we get to see a lot more of the uh, the different factions as everything ramps up. We had a couple of dragon slash wyvern fights. Um, so it should be interesting. Yeah, and then I guess I kind of happened to see some of the other covers. So yeah. I know we're going to get some elf. Yeah. Yeah. And then some giant space squids. Or something giant space similar. squids, you say? Potentially. Yes, please. Unless I completely just missed what I was seeing. My eyes were lying to me. 
in, in a way, it almost has like a, a D and D slash zombie apocalypse feel, uh, which is like a lot of the different stuff we get in there. Um, but it's interesting. It's definitely interesting. Um, it was nice to kind of get out of our entry level towns, get to see a little bit more of what's going on with the world, seeing how other towns have kind of set themselves up. We have the one town where the sheriff has kind of taken over um, and they're doing a good job kind of having some semblance of society after the world has ended. So that was a pretty um, solid win settlement wise. We had the settlement that try to remember where it was exactly, but it was kind of like off the major road within that Wyverns um, area. And, you know, he just kind of set up the settlement um, just to have it get wiped out pretty, pretty quickly. Um, you got that in your notes? Uh, maybe. Oh, it was the it ended up being the border border in holdout because hmm. it was we ran into the roads being blocked and we took out the skinhead gang and then we continued on and we went right. into um yeah the ones that were by the wyvern ended up being classified as uh, border in holdout which then they got taken out by the wyvern mm-hmm yeah um trying to think what else here or i guess just reading what we had we had the dragons appearing we had zombies advancing where uh we got them attacking with a crowbar then we had the mm -hmm. uh, muppets incident with the uh flaming screaming zombies um oh then we get the rest stop kill another abuser save two people that are supposed to be going back yeah uh, on the side roads get the spider encounter which uh i yeah is is a thing um ba -ba -ba. then we get the oh i couldn't remember the name but uh the main chicky poo is uh char or charlene where she doesn't want mm. him explaining things to the rest of it and uh they end up almost being ambushed at the end and ends up taking out more people and then they're going off uh that's also when we get the underwear upgrade which is very relevant um uh, I, I got a good chuckle out of that. Another way to kind of break the game mechanics. Uh, yeah, yeah, with the nod of every character anywhere always having a layer of undergarments. Um, but then we get the uh, the two toads who attack, who pop up out of the water, and yeah, that's just... Lake monsters! Show the potential of all of that. And then we get the seven feet or seven foot cows and the giant hawks, which is a whole separate mess. Um, mm -mm -mm. Break up the gang, create the border and hold out destroyed by the wyverns. I, um, I got a chuckle out of the whole uh, Thor and Loki um, banter back and forth because the leader of the skinheads is, you know, I am Thor and, you know, they're like, you know, I'm I'm Thor's brother. I'm here, you know, to see him and yada yada yada. It's like, oh, so you're Loki? And just yeah. Yeah. It was, good it was good back humor. and forth. And that's where like I'm excited to see kind of the divergence or the split off because he references something that doesn't happen inside their timeline. Mm -hmm. And then he's also talking about, well, can I see what the other players' feeds are? As well mm -hmm. as, like, there's been time since he's passed away to get insight into the outside world and right. yada yada. Um, after that, my notes, I believe, are over because I was silly. Uh, just kidding. 
H2. Uh, we get the catfish attack, You're which I know catfish thing. can, like, sting with their whiskers. But Tentacles, being able to manipulate whiskers. them that way was uh, interesting. Yeah. Uh, set up the settlement at E. Lee, which ended up having 177 people, which was pretty quick transition all in all. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm -mm -mm. Alvin finally gets his undergarments. Uh, we his get G asking for the AI car expansion. Uh, ba -ba. I, I like how Jeeves has to stay within his parameters, but he's kind of like Alvin's grown on him. So he's like rooting for him. And it, it kind of implies that the better his charge does, the better he does in a way. Um, not sure exactly how that works, but um, yeah. I... How does it go with the weird fact of like everyone who's in the simulation was a failed experiment at one point? And then, as we know from our handler, the first guy who he was named after died as soon as he did his first um, story mission or whatever. So he didn't have high hopes. Yeah, I don't even think he got into the open world, right? Or yeah, not into world. It was on the story he died. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, Wait, which, yeah, yeah, there's definitely a unique twist for the AI. Um, mm -hmm. the dead dragon with the fuel, uh, the lava salamander gate, uh, attacked by the Drake. Oh, uh, we didn't talk about it, but finding the plane but the owner's still alive so the plane aspect is, is interesting live or the the keys weren't there they, no they the, know well, where both. the keys are the keys okay. weren't there and he was like what it should just be an ignition switch and gothy's like oh well whoever had this really wanted to keep it because they added a key and then he gotcha. he hot or he uh oh not hot wires but Anyway, he gets it going. They go mm -hmm. on a drive. He goes back to his holdout or his cell or whatever. And Jeeves mm -hmm. is like, no, you can't claim it because the owner's still alive. And then that's when he pops back and we get the coyotes attacking. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um, so that's interesting. And then we get the whole point of Alvin Ass. Well, if the owner dies, would we then be able to claim it through the store? And Jeeves is like, I don't know. That's never came up. So the forwardly backward nature of giving the creators ideas and uh, sidestep. We run into a lot of that in Headshot where they're literally scraping surface thoughts and mm -hmm. getting concepts and ideas to implement, which... I, it, it happens in today's games, but they always have to take it with a grain of salt where the people who are unhappy are very loud and a lot of people don't understand things. So why can't this right. happen? Um, well, that one thing you want to happen actually would entail, you know, six months of back end development as well as you know three months of front end implement anyway anyway there, there's a lot yeah, more yeah. than the reality of the matter uh, ba -ba. and then that's when we finally get jeeves uh his car upgrade that that car is pretty op like the amount um it saves them with its like crazy durability being able to like just straight up take lava damage yeah and going forward towards the end there they talk about they have a tank and jarvis does say that the transfer orb for xp is still available and the fact that now jeeves can drive a vehicle 
not saying it's gonna happen, oh. but saying beep to beep tank with our sidekick, Gothy. Hashtag. We, we, we can have like Chibis, we, AI yeah, Tesla driver. So yeah. we we've got, got advancement opportunities car. now that all of our uh, uh, weapons have been nerfed, so to speak. And I, the guy who owns the plane, I believe, is at the place we're in at the end. Might be a different location, but potential there. So we can get. You know, Gothy flying a plane. We can get Jeeves driving the Mustang, and then we can get Alvin, you know, manning a tank. Though I think it typically takes more than one individual, you know, driver, gunner. Yeah. But... So it might. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah. There's so... a lot of potential there. Like I, I appreciate. Um the little bit of tease and the expansion of the game mechanics in book two. Um, it's something that's yeah. really important to keep my interest is like, okay, like yes, ease me into the world, but like, let's keep ratcheting this stuff up. Okay. Um, and it does that, right. We, we yeah. start off with, you know, cool looking car and now we got a tank and a plane. Though one of the mechanics that we use in book one for being able to summon a claimed vehicle to you while inside a settlement, mm. I don't think he actually he utilizes it throughout this, which I, I guess he didn't really have too many opportunities. But at the but same time, when he made it and take a plane. Yeah, and then they can summon the other one to him, um, Daisy Chain, as well as hinted at that yeah. you could eventually, once you unlock it, transport people through the way stations kind of deal. Yeah, fun. Fun, fun, fun. Uh, then we get to Goldfield, where we're being shot at by zombies. Um, we learn about the ghost children and other things. Um, and then we end up that that, that was, was probably that was the most like scene. game like esque things. You know, zombies are taking the tunnel funnel approach off the get go, where mm, they have yeah. to come down this road, picking them off, and then we take the Anakin and I have the high ground approach, and you know we're trying to take them out from the roof, and then Obi Wan had the high ground. Or, yeah, yeah, Obi-Wan saying, <laughs> and I have the high ground. Yeah, I got you. Um, yep. And then, yeah, just the the difference in the nature where they're zombies. Yeah, they're still taking cover and not just blindlessly charging them. But at the same time, they really don't care about your cover fire because a lot of it doesn't affect them. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the development of... Or I'm interested to see where the changes go. I'm curious to see more of the other gates and implementations there. Um, and then the animals themselves, like it used to be we would have to fight the apocalypse gate and the zombies and be the humans defending it. But I'm going to be honest, uh, yeah, the animals are doing pretty well and possibly going to be able to fight back yes the other things coming through except yes. for i don't think we have anything that's fireproof or lava proof at this point in time car. or i was talking like if we domesticate animals oh, and set gotcha. them up by the yeah. salamander gate and then have them be able to combat the salamanders much like we were going to do a iron cage over the uh the fey gate mm -hmm. yeah all in all a lot of fun um we have the rest of the series in our wish list we don't have anything beyond book two yet so definitely going to watch for Amazon's famous sales and those guys to pop in there to pick it up and to continue the series. Um, 
it's it's always interesting seeing the different type different types of zombies. Um, it's been fun kind of doing our monster mash for October. But oh, well, like, so that's where rules. for this one, sorry, the zombies it gets. I'm skeptical in the fact that the way they're advancing, it's kind of seems like they're there can be only one or all one body, so to speak, because in our small town where we begin, they start using crude weapons, handheld weapons. And then mm -hmm. as we're traveling and we're on the freeway, like, yes, there's a lot of cars and vehicles and yes, there's not a lot of supplies and opportunities for the people who didn't get raptured to save themselves or whatever. Mm -hmm. But I would it just the volume and the numbers don't add up. But then we get to that last town where they're actually shooting at us. And I was like, OK, it could be believable because it's a bigger town and we didn't find any survivors. So they obviously won as well as mm -hmm. they also have some Indian burial ground, not Indian burial ground type situation going on where for some reason people haven't passed on. Um, and it kind of answers that question of why the zombies go for the killing blow so that they can absorb your life essence, so to speak. Um, with them advancing and we literally had the conversations with the hawks i want to say when we mm -hmm. came back to harvest off of the drake i think they were ravens ravens yeah ravens are known to be more intelligent and they they kind of had um some semblance of speech yeah not yeah. quite human intelligence but enough to you know understand food and help and stuff like that so I'm I'm curious to see, and I guess that that was the other side of things for instead of you know domesticating animals to be able to have them develop and be able to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, because I'm gonna be honest, Lord of the Rings when they're riding on giant elephants and they've got you know treant people helping them destroy mm -hmm. stuff, like we can make it happen. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think we have any tree ants, but you know, the elven culture's coming up, so we might. We don't know yet. Yeah. Um it, he I enjoy the series and I was looking a bit earlier, but um Daniel has a number of other series that might be worth checking out too and adding to our wish list. Um well, and there I, are a I lot guess of that's, longer that's another series. Thing. This is our first exposure to this author and i don't mm -hmm. know in his career whether this is considered earlier or later one um, of his more popular series is gamer for life alpha world mm -hmm. that that sounds kind of up your alley so uh let me read the the summary real quick um gamer for life i think i've actually seen this Seamus is facing life in prison without parole. While doing his time, he's given an option by the Department of Justice and the biggest virtual game maker around, Mind Blown Entertainment. If he will help them test long-term immersion, he will get a chance to play the latest game from Mind Blown Alpha World. All he has to do is sign away his legal rights and sign an NDA. He's the first gamer to be sentenced to life imprisonment in a virtual world. What could go wrong? Wasn't wasn't there a movie that kind of had this uh, similar thing? Same dude that played uh, Leonidas. Uh, who am I talking about? You don't watch any more movies than I do. Um. But yeah, it's uh, it's approaching that time for the stream. Really appreciate everybody hanging out and geeking out with us. Um, gosh, I've spoiled today getting to do back to back two different live book discussions. Um, next week, uh, what what do we have coming up, Pete? About oh, oh, look at that wow. hair. 
So next week we have Savage Dominion. Uh, I should know. I know it's Luke Chimalenko, but he partners with GD Penman. GD Penman. Uh, it's kind of it's not quite sticking with our zombie theme, but he. Uh, I can't remember the name. He turns monsters. into essentially a guy who has horns. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it is good. It, it falls into main character dies, story begins. Um, it has a very similar, I guess, beginning mechanics to God's Eye by Alaron Kong. But that's, that's kind of where I would say, or as far as that goes, it's not quite the same premise like a battle royale, but it's similar in the fact that you have received godly powers that you find after you have died and you're somewhat beholden to them with this, you will be, you know, brought back if you perish right and it's kind of random unless you end up uh establishing a holding uh but the premise of the first book is uh we have a a random new party and we're on this epic quest to assemble the sword that is known to defeat gods mm-hmm yeah, and uh, I'm I'm glad we're finally getting to this. Um, Luke Chimalenko is an instant buy for us. This isn't quite a send online, but I think it has the potential to kind of grow into something epic like that. And um, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, you get to see a lot of Luke Chimalenko's typical gamer humor. Um, Malkin, the main character, he essentially is like, uh, oh, I don't want to get into too much spoilers, but it's it's a lot of fun. Think um, more of like a D and D type style um, lit RPG where you have your party assembled, starting out brand spanking new. And you, you have to just learn the whole new world. And um, yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of fun. I've, I've already listened to this book probably three or four times now. So I'm looking forward to um, geeking out with you guys on Halloween. There yeah, may or may not be candy. may or may not change. We might do it a little bit earlier just because apparently Halloween wasn't canceled this year. So I may have to participate. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. So um, just check the, the homepage of our YouTube channel for that time. If it changes, we'll also try to um, tweet it out and push it out on other areas of social media. If you have Halloween plans, you can always catch it on the replay on our channel and then just uh join the discussion in the comments below after the fact um but yeah do you want to plug the next one well bam finally so, getting back to it november i'm sorry is gonna be all about me all the ones <laughs> that have come out that i've wanted to get to uh anyway this is watchers repost by sean oswald it is the fourth book in the Life in Exile series. Um, for those who don't know the series, it's amazing. Uh, follows, falls into the premise of lit RPG, more a Sekai type where you get transported into another world. What is excitingly well done and very unique is it's the whole family that's brought. They're essentially book one driving down the road with the whole family in the car and a portal opens up, takes in the whole vehicle and yeah, their whole 
yeah, everybody's transported to this other world. Um, in regards to book four here, it is more so from the children's perspective. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's enjoyable. It's very well done. Uh, it's, some... it's a great series for people who are wanting to get into lit RPG, in my humble opinion. It's it's a very good entry level lit RPG. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not overly stats heavy. It follows or falls more typical, I guess, story based logic for having the bigger overarching, you know, hey, here's this town. Hey, this is your king. Um, and, you know, things change within it. I, but for me, it's it's a lot more of that it's just that that wholesome feel of having the whole family and watching them grow and develop in their own regards, as well as having them come together and just the different way they mesh. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm um, I'm excited to uh, get to what we call it. Um, no, November Peter selection. We'll, we'll think of something witty, but yeah, we we have so many books in our backlog. It's not funny. Um, we could probably do two to three of these a week and still not get caught up with all the goodness. But that said, we uh, we appreciate your guys' support coming out, hanging out with us once a week as we uh, geek out over these epic books. It's um, quite frankly the, the highlight of our week to be able to hang out with you guys in uh, this nice little corner of the internet. Appreciate all the support. Going to keep rocking Sundays through the end of the year. Um, and as always, like keep throwing those book suggestions our way um white thatch has been on it always pointing out good lit rpg books for us um we also welcome non lit rpg books uh i, I sometimes I, get, we business. I was about to say sometimes i can get pete out of the genre um, I, there's a number I do of series we want to go books. back to like we we got all the way up to my personal favorite of the Dune series, and we, we put need that to on go hiatus. And continue. Yeah. So, um, Pete and I are going to go watch the new Dune movie that's out. Maybe make some fun content for you guys because I am a Dune super fan. So, really looking forward to that shit. Um, oops, sorry, I was said keeping it PG. Um, but yeah. It, we're we're going to circle back. We we have a couple other buddies who are catching up on other series, so yeah, it, yeah. Just let us know. Always looking forward to having more of you guys join us on stream as well as in the chat. And yeah, what I miss, Pete. Uh, sums it up. Really enjoyed the. Oh, Valley of Death, going to be continuing the series. Currently don't own any more of them, but uh, yeah, going to be moving on to other series and hopefully make our way back to it. Yeah, oh. they are on our wish list, though we do accept um, audible gifts. So uh, geek, geek on my sleeve at Gmail. Feel, feel free to send um, books our way. We'll definitely check them out. Alrighty, and that will conclude the stream for this week. Thank you again for everybody stopping by, and hope to geek out with you here soon. Bye. Bye.